and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week we're going to be reviewing the Element Helix 6 24 by 50 Now Element offers really good value for what they bring to the table at a really good price. So if you're looking for an optic with like all the features of a more premium optic, the Element Helix might be this optic. Now, it has a 50 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube. It has uh, 65 MOA's worth of internal adjustment on these turrets. It does have a zero stop. Now at $500 Canadian or $399 US, a zero stop is, is rare. It has 3.7 to 4 inches of eye relief and a wide magnification range from 6 to 24. So really this optic is ideally catered towards the long range air gun shooter. So like the, the with people with the FX air guns, those precision air guns well, this would be a great partnership for those air guns. Now, I'm going to be using it a little bit differently. I don't have any air guns. I have centerfire rifles that are capable for long range. So that's exactly what we're going to be using it for. So not exactly the perfect fit. This one is maybe a bit more catered towards, you know, from zero to five, six hundred. Like that is probably its happy place. So let's start with the glass quality. This is a barn at 400 meters. So what I want you to observe is really the, the texturing, the, the, the rust, look at its degrading, paying attention to these fine details, which is not always able, you're not always able to see with the more budget glass. I think they, they put some good quality glass. I mean, it's not ED glass like we saw in their Element Titan. Now, I mean, if you want to shoot really far, you're going to need better glass than this. So like we were shooting, we're going to be shooting a 900 meter soon. And in my opinion, <laughs> It's, a, it's it's not the glass isn't quite sufficient for that distance when it's really bright um, it's, it's hard to tell your hits on steel you would want the element titan for that purpose okay so this is also a 5g tower which uh yeah it's about two kilometers away now as much as the glass is an edhd glass at this price you're not going to get that but they do deliver some very good, very clear, and very sharp glass. And I think they deserve a 5 out of 5 for that. Next, we have the eye relief, which is 3.7 to 4 inches. So this is at the highest magnification. And it has a very forgiving eye box, even at the highest magnification. At the lowest magnification, yeah, we have 3.7 inches. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. You're going to have more than enough eye relief, so you won't get any scope bite from any rifles. So we're going to give it a 5 out of 5. Next, we have the field of view. So at the lowest magnification, we have 18.3 feet at 100 yards. At the highest magnification, 4.6. As much as this isn't the most field of view at that distance, it's really not going to make all that much of a difference anyway. Even in a PRS match, I mean, having a little bit more is only going to gain you, what, maybe a second or two at most. So realistically, I wouldn't really base my decision on that. But anyway, for the field of view, we're gonna give it a 4 out of 5. Next, we have the Focus Parallax, which I think really starts to show where this optic is catered towards. So it starts all the way down at 10 meters. I mean, I never shoot any rifles that close, <laughs> ever. Uh, while air gun shooters, that may very well be the case if you're ratting or whatever the case is. So it goes from 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, 100, 150, 300, then infinity. So really, just by looking at the focus parallax, you can really tell that it's more pushed towards the close range precision stuff, which is exactly what the air gun industry is. You know, well, then again, 300 meters in the air gun industry is like extreme long range shooting. It's, it's like the equivalent. Uh, it is very smooth and it does offer a lot of texture, a lot of knurling so that like you'll be able to turn this no problem. Then again, it's smooth enough that you didn't necessarily need this much. I mean, it's almost to the point that it's like sharp. <laughs> anyway, for the Focus Parallax, we're going to give it a 5 out of 5. Next, we're going to do recoil. So this is where we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I've actually bought a drone, the DJI Mini 2, and I wanted to do our downrange footage with that. And I've already started editing the footage and I think it looks pretty darn amazing. This is going to be a first for me and I think pretty much a first uh, for the long range shooter community. For a, long, a down range camera, I think it does an amazing job. Then again, I only have about like 20 minutes runtime, so all this is going to be edited from those 20 minutes. Anyway, enjoy this. So you probably don't see the down range camera. Well, where is it? Well, I got a surprise for you. What is that humming noise? Oh boy, it's a drone. So this is what we're gonna be using 
to, whoop, I don't want to crash in that tree, to go spot our hits. So this thing is really awesome. Yeah, that was a tree. I almost hit it there. Pretty close. And I think this is probably one of the best pieces of technology when it comes to long range shooting and, and like long range cameras. So with this unit, not only can I get 4K footage, which I think we're just on 1080p, but I, I can hover there for as long as I want and I don't have to drive there to go get it. So it's really awesome. So that's what we're gonna be using today for our long range shooting. And plus I could just leave it like this and it'll just hover wherever I tell it to do so. Got my buddy James here, who's gonna be spotting our hits. All right, now I'm just at 500, so I'm pretty sure I can spot my own hits, but I'm lucky enough to have a friend here who's gonna be making sure I am. So at 500 meters, I should only be dialing about 4.6 mils, and that's what we're gonna be doing. First, let's aim for the big boy. I gotta bring up these legs. Now also, what we're using here today is the Cadex Falcon Light Bipod. So a really nice bipod that's easily deployable to lengthen those legs, which I do very much like. Okay, big gong first. See where we're hitting, then we'll hit the little guys. Yeah, we were right above it. So I'm gonna dial a little less, like four and 4.2 mils, something like that. We're still pretty high. Okay, I gotta go down even more. Guess temperature has a massive effect on this. Which I'm hoping you guys can tell just as clearly as I can, because I think this footage is gonna look really good. I think you guys are gonna really like this. I mean, we're only at 500 meters, which isn't... I mean, it, it's where you start to call it long range. It's almost medium range. Okay, we're a little low. Bring it up, like, two clicks and maybe one click left. We're really lucky today because there's like no wind. Let's aim for the, the medium guys. Bam! <laughs> That's awesome. Let's take one more hit at the medium guy and then we'll go to 750. Oh, we're like right over it. Okay, enough fun at 500, let's take it to 750. All right, so we're at 750 meters. Actually, I think it's actually more like 720 because we moved our table up a little bit further. So I should have to dial about 8.25 mils. So uh, that's, that's six, seven, eight. I think we'll be a little high though. So that's what I'm expecting. It's really hot out today. Our rounds are getting a little warmer. So I think the velocities are gonna be up just a bit. Keep that in mind. It's one of the frustrating things when you're doing long range shooting is your rounds get hot and the velocity goes up. All right, aiming center mass on the big gong. Yeah. Oh, we hit, yay. <laughs> okay, so we're actually right at seven mils. My original data was kind of wrong. Or the heat has gotten so bad that that's kind of what we're at here for, you know, our dope. It's like 30 degrees Celsius, which for you Fahrenheiters, don't know what that is. Wow, it's like right on top of the other one, eh? Yeah. Nice. Like an inch off. Yeah, good shot. Woo. Okay, a little higher to the left. That's fun. Did we hit in the same cluster as before? No, nope. missed the plate. Ah, missed the plate. Actually, you know what? Let's send it for 900 meters. Oh. 
So as much as I should be letting this barrel cool down, I really, really want to hit that gong and I really want to see what it looks like on the drone. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, so that's at 950 meters right now. You guys see it in live footage. This is going to look damn good. So right now we're dialed at six, seven. I think it's going to be nine. I don't really know. We're going to send it, right? YOLO. Oh my gosh, did you see that? We actually hit it 900 meters. <laughs> or in yards, it's like a million. Anyway, that is my first time hitting at this range at this distance. First shot, first hit on steel. I actually saw that thing swing, so I, I'm so excited right now. We're gonna send it for a second shot. That was bottom left corner. Okay. Oh, left corner. Looks like it was right underneath. Okay, I'm gonna aim higher and right. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. yeah. <laughs> caught the bottom lip of the plate. Okay. Oh. Hit it again? Yeah. Now you're top top of the plate. Woo! So that was a blast. I'm really lucky I had my friend James to help spot me. I mean, the glass in this optic, I couldn't really tell all my hits on steel. I, I mean, I absolutely could not tell my hits on steel at 900 meters. The, the glass in this is not capable of that. I, what I should have brought would be my Element Titan, and then I'd be able to tell with ease my hits on steel. It's just this optic at that distance, it's, it's not really designed for that. This is designed for zero or, or 10 to like four or 500. Then you're gonna be very, very happy with this. So anyway, for recoil, 5 out of 5, we didn't have any issues on my 6.5 Creedmoor. Next, let's talk about the turret. So I think Elements, attention to detail, attention to what people want in these optics, I think they did very well. So we have a 65 MOA's worth of internal adjustment on these turrets. So actually this one's in mils, so it's 18.9 uh, mils. And on the windage, we have 11.6 mils or 40 MOA. We have six mils per revolution and we have a zero stop, which is absolutely amazing. At this price, it's kind of unheard of to have this many features, this kind of quality and the attention to detail that they do. For example, re-zeroing your turret is literally this easy. You remove this simple cap, you lift up the turret, you put it back on where it needs to be, you put this back on and tighten it, tighten it nice and good here, it won't move, um, and you're done. It's literally that easy. No tools, nothing. And same thing on the windage. So I think they did a really great job. Anyway, enough of me talking. Let's get out to the range. Let's test these turrets. I start with the box test. Let's go three mils down. Perfect. Three mils right. Perfect. Back to zero. And back to zero. Great. Let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. Looking good. Let's validate the tracking. Let's go three mils down. Looking good. Six. Okay. Nine. Twelve. And fifteen. Fix my camera, sorry guys. It's just the eye box. There we go, 15. Let's see how much internal adjustment it has. That's it. And that's it. Let's validate the amount of windage adjustment it has. That's it. And that's it. So, obviously you can do a box test. The tracking on this thing is great. It has 65 MOA or 18.9 mils. And I mean, at this price, 
you're 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 rarely or pretty much never gonna see more than that. So this is a very very good value. Like the turrets, if I could give them a six out of five, I think this is more than the standard that optics have at this price. So we're gonna give it a five out of five. Next we have the reticle. So this is the APR uh, 3D. Now they have two different versions, which I mean really just one's an MOA, one's in mills, but they're basically the same reticle. Now, they don't have any other options so far for, for, for these reticles. I mean, there is a second focal plane version, actually. So if you did want second focal plane, it is out there. Also, it is not illuminated, which, I mean, this price, can you expect it to be? Mm, not really. So for the reticle, we are going to give it a 5 out of 5. I really do like the design of the reticle. And at the highest and lowest, mag at the highest magnification, it's not too thick. Lastly, we have the warranty. So obviously any optics company in this day and age is going to offer a lifetime warranty, which is very much the case with Element. They offer a lifetime warranty. So anyway, my opinion on this optic, it's a tremendous value for what it is. For long range or like extended long range shooting, it's not gonna be your optic of choice. But if you want a entry level optic between like, Dick and your price point is no more than 500, Absolutely, this is my recommendation. You will not be disappointed whatsoever with this. It tracks great, the glass is nice, it's a nice bright image. Um, it's got a zero stop, which if you don't know what a zero stop is, I mean, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's really convenient just bringing it back to zero and knowing that that is your zero as opposed to, or was it, did I just go past the zero last time? I don't know. So it's just so much better having a zero stop, you bring it to its zero and that's it. Anyway, I think it offers a fantastic value. So if you're looking at picking one up, I mean, you can check out their website. There should be some retailer. There are some retailers in Canada, the US. They're, they're pretty much well stocked. So this is one good recommendation at an affordable price. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.